COVID is yesterday's news. It hasn't gone, but provided we don't get some radical new variant emerging, it feels like we're facing the long tail end of it now. My internet doom scrolling has traded COVID for the Ukraine-Russia conflict, but I do still check in on the old friend occasionally, just to see how the figures are doing. UK's COVID map has gone from fierce blacks and purples, indicating extremely high case rates, to comparatively tame blue colours instead. Wales has even turned a pathetic shade of green, indicating low numbers of new cases. There have been times in the pandemic when a map looking like this would have been bad news, but for now, with the case rates rapidly dropping, it's a sigh of relief. All of the stats are moving in the right direction. This could be partially down to changes in testing. We used to get free tests, but now we must pay. Audi has COVID tests in stock, five for just under £10. Most people won't bother testing anymore, but some people with vulnerable friends or relatives will still use these before meeting them, just to be sure. I still carry a mask with me and wear it in shops, and I am more rigorous with hand washing before eating than I used to be, especially when I've been outside. Something new happened to me this month, I got a cold. My girlfriend passed it on to me, and I might have passed it on to my parents, who have then passed it on to other people. We know it's not COVID because we all tested. Seven in ten people in England have had COVID now, apparently. I'm yet to get it, but this pandemic and all its lockdowns have resulted in several years where none of the people I've known have had a cold of any sort, which has been a refreshing change. There is always a balancing act to be had with this. It's good to be ill occasionally to keep your immune system ticking over and all that, but it does show that practicing better hygiene, wearing masks and so on, does make a difference. And I hope, going forward, that we aim to improve our hygiene and the air conditioning in buildings and other small measures which would go a long way towards cutting down on these sorts of illnesses. I do at least like to cling on to the idea that something good will come from COVID. Regarding travel restrictions, you have to check a country's requirements before flying there. Some, like Iceland, don't have any, while others, like, say, Morocco, still require that you take a costly PCR test before travelling. The UK has experienced high hepatitis rates in children, and other countries have begun noticing a similar trend. Covid is a prime suspect in all of this, though it's yet to be definitively proven. Though that hasn't stopped the vaccines from already being accused of causing this, even though many of the children with the liver disease haven't even had them yet, due to their young age. I suppose this sort of long-term damage is the biggest fear with something like Covid going forward. As it's a new disease, it could be a while before we discover the true extent of the damage that it can cause. And rather than staring us in the face, it may be that this sort of damage only slowly emerges in patterns like we're seeing with hepatitis rates right now. Obviously, with a new disease, people fear the immediate symptoms and infection the most, but this long-term damage is more sinister, and a good reason to remain cautious when dealing with something new and unknown. It's just unfortunate that the full extent of it probably won't be known for decades to come. And then there's long COVID, which, among many other things, causes a period of depression and exhaustion following the disease. I can't say I've had long COVID, since I don't think I've even had COVID, but I have experienced many of the same symptoms. I think in my case it's been down to how I've dealt with the lockdowns and the reduced freedom that we've had recently. I've instead filled all of my time with the stuff that I can still do, and over time that's become a habit that's consumed my entire existence. So now things have opened up again, I feel I don't have the time nor energy for them because I'm too busy doing all the nothing that I filled my time with previously. So this is disappointing. Rather than the pandemic ending and everybody celebrating and partying in the streets, we're all left trying to overcome all of the bad habits and internet arguments that we've filled our last few years with. For me, this is a multifaceted issue that has affected my eating habits, my internet habits, my social habits, and even how I make my videos. All of this in a bad way. So this is probably better left as a topic for another video, but for me, the very way I view my content creation on YouTube has changed. I no longer start a video with the intention of finishing it on the same day, and this has transformed how I perceive my work. Every video now feels like a big, looming undertaking that I can't even see to the end of, and so I end up chipping away at the same video over the course of days or weeks instead. And despite all that extra effort and polish, my content ends up getting the same number of views and comments as it would have done anyway. Which is, of course, disheartening for me. So this video you're watching right now is the solution, and almost like therapy for me. Being a quick, easy video that I can make in a matter of hours and then release. It doesn't consume the whole day, nor does it loom over me as a massive undertaking. And getting this out will, in turn, get the ball rolling for other video projects, helping me to claw my way out of this dead end that I've found myself in. So for me, today won't be remembered as the day that I got a fraction of a video done. It'll be the day that I got this video done, and then some more, and then maybe a tune or two as well. I'm getting there. It's harder to get back into good habits than it is to lose them in the first place, but everybody's got to start somewhere.